Hey guys, Mike Verkest back with Dr. Sani. First question for you, how does it feel to be canceled? You know, it's going to be a great show today. Um, but before we do that, let's go ahead and start with our top ten list, all right? Oh, man. Really? Right? You're going to go right there. Well, I mean, you know, I... I, I loved your uh, on the recliner uh, little bits it and uh, oh the, by the way there you go throw that for me <laughs> all right so, so a little throwback a little homage to you so it was the most popular show that was recorded on that day in this studio I, I, I believe that. highest ra rated show so I was a little bit saddened and distressed well we're gonna do things a little bit different okay and the first the first thing we're gonna talk about uh, are some pretty substantial, I think, uh, and good changes for our Absolutely. stroke protocol. So um, why don't we talk a little bit about uh, about that? Sure, that, that's that's great. I, you know, I think we've had a lot of changes this year in the protocols, but I think this is the sort of biggest. Yeah, I agree. And there's substantial change, and it really impacts kind of our hospitals and our, uh, and our system mm -hmm. probably more than anything. Yeah. But what I would say is this. If the patient's having a really big stroke, then there are patients for whom certain interventions will, are more beneficial. And rather than create a system where patients go one place and then are transferred, we want to get the right patient to the right place in the right time. That's amazing. Systems of care. In, wow, I know. I, I know, right? I might have been something I'm interested in like long term as a career. <laughs> yeah. Well, I might even get into and that. And if you think little. about kind of the evolution of stroke, and, and I'll use STEMI and maybe uh, um, uh, sepsis uh, to some extent, but the trauma system for sure is, is getting that patient to the right place, the right time, where there's definitive care and there's options for those patients that are there. Absolutely, absolutely. And so, so what we figured out, or what we think, is that there is a, a this subgroup of patients who have what is called LVO, large vessel occlusion. Correct. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So they've got a big, wampin, giant ass artery in the brain. Mm -hmm. It's not a little tiny artery at the end point that's that's blocked. Uh, it is, it's a big one. Yeah. And those patients may benefit not just from TPA, but from actually going to the cath lab. Okay. And so, um, you know, you can't go to the cath lab just anywhere, right? You, this is a very specialized skill yeah. uh, that's required. And mm -hmm. so we want those patients who are more likely to have those strokes to go to the cath lab. So I guess then that begs the question, how do we in the field differentiate that large vessel versus the endpoint, you know, the, the, the stroke that's way down the line, for example. Yeah, so there, there's two answers to that question. There's the sort of generic answer, or not generic answer, but there's the sort of overarching answer, which is they're the sicker looking patients. Fair if enough. the stroke patient looks like crap, mm -hmm. looks very sick, you already know who those are. You guys take care of these patients yeah. all the time. Yeah. If the patient looks really bad, then those are probably the LVO patients. Um, or uh, intracranial hemorrhage. Sure. Uh, but there is, you know, people have gone around, there are multiple scoring tools that you can use, and we've implemented a scoring tool in our protocol to help you figure it out. And that's called the CSTAT, uh, which is like the Cincinnati, uh, Cincinnati Stroke Triage Assessment Tool. Oh, okay. All right. But the idea, so the idea is, you're going to do your initial assessment, right? So, so just our typical LA pre-hospital stroke screen that we've been doing for exa yep. Exactly. Nothing has changed with that. Exactly. So first thing you're going to do is identify the stroke patients. All right? So if the patient has a stroke, your next step, you're going to check a sugar, right? Mm -hmm. Because yep. the sugar is it's a part of that, stroke part mimic. Of yep. You're going to get timing. And then the next step is to do this CSTAT scale, okay. the Cincinnati scale, uh, which is I basically to identify the, the patients who are who are at risk for large vessel occlusion. Okay. It's not 100%. Okay. It's like 80% of these patients will have an, uh, it, it will identify 80% of the LVOs. Okay. A sizable chunk of these patients won't have an LVO, but it, I, it does kind of risk stratify. These people are more at risk. And the big thing is, uh, it, it, there's three items to the stroke scale, but really it kind of breaks down into two, two sections. Two sections. Yeah. The first is a gaze preference. Um, and it's a little confusing because it's called an ipsilateral gaze press preference. Okay. But the idea is if you have a stroke on the left side of your brain, what side of your brain, what side of your body is affected? It would be the right side. Correct. Or the opposite side. The opposite side. Yeah. You know, there are some brainstem strokes that can sure. do cross things, but a big middle cerebral artery stroke on the left side of the brain is going to paralyze your right side. Okay. If it's so big that it's causing the patient's gaze to be away from the side of the, of the, 
neurodeficit, mm -hmm. that is called a gaze preference. And it's called an ipsilateral. Ipsilateral means same side. Same side. And you're like, well, wait a minute, it's the opposite side. No, it's the <laughs> same side as the stroke. So they're looking at the stroke. They're looking to the stroke, exactly, yeah. Yeah. exactly. So if they have a gaze preference uh, to, to the, to that side, uh, which is primarily a deviation. So we've all seen those strokes where those oh, patients are like gorked out and their eyes mm -hmm. are looking away. Yeah. So if their eyes are deviating away from the paralysis, that is two points on the stroke scale. And guess what? All you need is two points for a C-STAT positive stroke. Exactly. So Exactly. So yeah, so if they have a d d gaze preference, two points done, C-STAT positive. Yeah. And then the next half is, are, are they altered? And then are they like profoundly par paralyzed? Oh, okay. All right. Okay. Yeah. That's how I look at it. So you hold up their arms, and you know we do that already, mm -hmm. right? And if you get a little bit of a drift. pronator drift, that's one thing. But if you hold up their arms, like, right? You know that. So they can't hold up the arm for ten seconds if it drops. That's, that's one. A, that's point. a point. Right. And then the other point is if they have an altered level of consciousness. And in reality, it says you know you have to give them two LOC questions, if they get one of those wrong, and if you um, have them follow commands and they can't do them. So if, if it's like they're, they, they're not, if they have an altered level of consciousness and they don't follow a command, that's a point. Yeah. So think about it, it's two points. So gaze preference done. If they don't have a gaze deviation or preference, then you check for arm profound drift. arm drift and altered level of consciousness. Yeah. And if they have both of those. There's your two points. There's your two points. Okay, good. So, and the reality is it's not like, it's not like a whole separate thing that's gonna be happening. Cause a lot of this stuff, you're gonna figure out when you're assessing your patient. Absolutely. Right, so it's not like you gotta go through LA pre-hospital and then okay, yep, they passed that. Now we're gonna do this. It's really, it's gonna be super probably, in my estimation, ob obvious that, well, you know. Well, I mean, we're high, you know, we, got, we have great paramedics who are highly trained. Yeah. I'm pretty sure nobody in our region would walk in and not notice somebody with a Agreed. gaze deviation. Agreed. Right? Yeah. So right then, if you walk in and, and the guy's got a gaze deviation, you're like, okay, this is a big stroke yeah. and this is going to be a, a C-STAT positive. Okay, cool. So then the next question down the line is, where are we going to take them? Yeah. Wh what do you do with and, that information? And, right, exactly. Yeah. So. The point is this, if the patient has a positive C-STAT. And a positive LA stroke. Well, you didn't get to C-STAT until you got LA. I know, but right. I just wanted to clarify. Right. So you positive do a, on both. You do, they have a positive stroke scale and they're C-STAT positive. Mm -hmm. They're gonna go to those facilities that can do intervention 24-7, 365, 366. Okay. On, on the on leap years. Leap years right. and, well, you. this year's a leap second, so we that extra second too. Okay. So okay. Uh, yeah, 2016 is a second longer. But um, so, so we're gonna go to those places, <laughs> okay? And those places are gonna be either our four comprehensive stroke centers in towns in the region or the other two centers that have agreed to be 100 percent available so the four comp today as a recording of this right. we have four cscs kaiser sunnyside providence st vincent's ohsu and legacy emmanuel okay so our our stroke identified patients were still only taking la positive but c stat negative. negative they can go to any stroke center right. they still have to be a stroke center right so they can, but, um, but the CSTAT positive can go to those four plus Meridian Park. And for those of us in Clackamas and Washington, that's really important, mm -hmm. right? Because Meridian Park is really kind of like right there. Yeah. Um, and, um, and Providence, Portland. Uh, be, uh, uh, because big, big prop. It's big yeah. prop. Yeah. Yeah. You know, with a wonderful emergency department, a fantastic emergency. Yeah, yeah. I know one of the guys there. He's, yeah, he's, he's okay. He's a good guy. Yeah. His football team sucks. Yeah. Anyway, who's your coach, anyway, by the way? Yeah. So, anyway. Um, okay. So <laughs> let's review. So we've got a stroke positive LA pre hospital stroke scale. They passed that. They're C stat positive. Now we need to take them to one of the comprehensive stroke centers or interventional. I would say inter one inter of the interventional capable centers. Right. And I think that's better because a couple of them are not. And, and the comprehensive is a designation that some of these facilities have earned, right? So Correct. it's like a, a plaque on the wall that says, we agree to do these things right. and be available. And it's an outside validation. I, mean, right. I think it's important. Yeah, yeah, uh, for sure. But it, it is an outside validation. But from a resource perspective, we felt that these other two places, you know, for that particular thing would be help, were appropriate. So does my stroke alert on the radio or phone sound different? It does, it does. So we're, what we want, we want you to do is we want, we want, we want to be clear. Right. So there's been some 
confusion, I think, from time to time. But when you have a person who meets LA positive criteria, and in, in the time of onset is 24 hours or less, those are all stroke alerts. All of our stroke centers, they want to hear about them, they want to know that these are stroke alerts, and they want the timing. So when you give report, I have an LA, I have a stroke alert, time of onset 12 hours ago, time of onset an hour and 15 minutes ago. Um, we then are going to tell them what the CSTAT was. And, and this is really important. It's not that we're only going to tell them if they're CSTAT positive. We're going to tell them CSTAT positive or CSTAT negative. Oh, okay. Okay, and, and the memo that's gone to all of our hospitals all of our stroke hospitals expects that. Okay. And because and, we want that CSTAT to be done every time and we want it to re be reported every time. Gotcha. And so that's how you build that sort of habit, right? You build a habit Absolutely. by doing it every time. And my guess is too, is it's going to be important to make sure that you document in your chart Absolutely. CSTAT positive, CSTAT negative, that kind of thing. And the well. components of LA and CSTAT also in your charting. Absolutely. Yeah. Yep. Great. I'm very. I'm super excited about this. Yeah. Um, because I think it's again, it's another step towards regionalized care, um, and I think this is uh, uh, the interventions. Uh, you know, there's TPA continues to have some controversy in some emergency physicians' minds. Mm -hmm. I think the data on the interventions is really compelling. Yeah. And so I think it's a great move forward, and hopefully will help a lot of people. Cool. Well, if you have any questions about the new stroke protocol, the CSTAT, or anything that's involved in the protocol, make sure you see your EMS training officer. All right. Thanks well, for tuning. You talk to your medical director. Or your, your medical director, of course. <laughs> we, we try to be the shield, uh, you know. Uh, no, stuff, I appreciate it very much. Yeah, exactly. Right. Cool. Thanks, guys. Thanks. Yep.